CQ satellite, CQ satellite, Kilo X-ray 9, X-ray rover, Kilo X-ray 9, X-ray rover, Echo Nancy 2030, grid line, QRZ. Hi, I'm Sean Kutzko, KX9X. Welcome to the second video in a series for DX Engineering on getting started in the amateur radio satellites. In this video, we'll go over the basics of getting on the FM satellites using the simplest station possible, HTs and a dual-band handheld Yagi antenna. We'll go over fundamentals of knowing when a satellite is going to be overhead, how to track the satellite as it crosses over the horizon, recording the satellite pass for easy logging after the pass is over, and making sure that your radio is staying tuned to the satellite's frequency as the pass is occurring. So it really is true that all you need to get on the satellites is a dual band HT that does 2 meters and 70 centimeters and an antenna that provides some gain to get into the satellite. Um, I've used a Yesu VX6 for uh, many satellite passes over the years uh, with reasonable success, but it has a major disadvantage in that I cannot hear myself on the satellite downlink in real time. This is what's known as full duplex operating. With an HT that doesn't have full duplex capability, I don't know if I'm actually making it into the satellite or not because I can't hear my own signal coming off the downlink in real time. That's why it's recommended that in order to achieve full duplex capability, you either have two HTs, one that's transmitting on 70 centimeters, for example, and another HT that's receiving on the satellite downlink on two meters, or you get an HT that is capable of full duplex operation. For today's demonstration, I'm going to be using a combination of the Kenwood THD72HT and a handheld dual band Yagi called the Aero Antenna. This is a three element on two meter, seven element on 70 centimeter handheld Yagi that is very easy to hold and can track the satellite easily overhead as the satellite is passing. Uh, the Kenwood THD72 uh, is a full duplex HT, meaning I can transmit on one band and I can monitor on another band simultaneously. This will allow me to hear in real time if my transmitted signal is making it into the satellite. One of the critical aspects during a satellite pass is to make sure that your receive antenna stays in alignment with the position of the antenna on the satellite itself. As the satellite is passing overhead during its pass, it's constantly tumbling and rolling as it goes through space. That means that the position of the antenna on the satellite is constantly changing. If you had an antenna that was in a fixed position, say for example the AO91 satellite, which we're going to be using a little bit later, that has a two meter downlink. So if I had my two meter antenna just in a fixed position throughout the entire pass, as the position of the antenna on the satellite changed, I would hear static and fading as the antennas became misaligned. In order to compensate for that and keep the downlink signal strong in my HT on my receive end, I need to make sure that I can rotate the antenna constantly as the satellite is passing overhead. That will eliminate something called polarization fading. As long as I can keep the alignment of the antenna on the satellite and my receive antenna in the same plane, then I will have a good signal throughout the entire pass. So before you can work a satellite, you need to know when the satellite is going to be above your local horizon. There are several ways that you can find out when satellites are gonna be overhead. Uh, AMSAT.org, the Radio Amateur Satellite Corporation of America, has a website where they maintain a list of satellite passes. All you have to do is log on and you can type in the satellite that you're interested in finding out pass information for and it will give you a display of upcoming passes for that specific satellite. There's a website, n2yo.com, that tracks various satellites and you can punch in your location and it will give you uh, information on specific satellites and when that satellite is going to be overhead. But perhaps the easiest thing to do if you are uh, a portable operator, and as we are talking about here, is to get a satellite tracking app for your smartphone. I use an Apple product, so I'm familiar with Apple iOS uh, satellite tracking programs. 
The best app that I have found out there is an app called GoSat Watch. It is not a free app, but I find it to be very feature rich and uh, I like some of the uh, displays that it has for tracking specific satellites, uh, giving you a display of what satellites are above the horizon at any given point in time. Uh, and it automatically updates the Keplerian elements, which keeps your calendar on track as to when the satellite is going to be overhead and where in the sky it's going to be passing for you. If you use an Android, there are a couple of apps that you should check out. Uh, one is called AMSAT Droid Free. That provides uh, good basic information on when satellites are going to be overhead. There's also an app for Android from the Heavens Above website that is very good and contains lots of information on other satellites as well as uh, amateur radio satellites too. While it's important that you have full duplex capabilities during a satellite pass so that you can hear your transmitted signal making it into the satellite in real time, that can create a feedback loop when you're transmitting because your transmit microphone and your receive speaker are so close to each other, you'll create a feedback loop when it hears the, its, its own signal going back into the microphone and you want to avoid that. The best thing to do under those circumstances is to simply wear earbuds or a set of headphones and that will eliminate that problem. Another common question I get is, how do you log your contacts during a satellite pass? Well, that's a fair question. I mean, if you have one hand holding your HT and another hand holding your antenna, how do you write down the information of the stations that you talk to? Uh, for me and a lot of other operators, we found that uh, the simplest solution to that problem is to record the satellite pass as it's going on and then write down the contact information after the fact. Um, I use a Sony PX470 digital recorder. Uh, this records in MP3 format. It's got a USB port off the back so I can save this to my computer uh, for permanent backup if I want to go back and review passes later. And it also has a line in for an audio source, uh, which is critically important because I don't have to rely on the internal microphone, which can capture noise uh, uh, in the area of the satellite pass where I'm operating. So this comes in very handy. What you can do is you can take uh, 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 an adapter out of the headphone jack on your HT and you can get a headphone splitter. And one of the splitters can go to your earbuds or your headset and the other can be uh, a stereo plug that plugs into the Sony PX470 and then you get a direct recording of what the audio sounds like from the downlink of the satellite as you are hearing it. Another key component of recording a satellite pass is to make sure you identify what pass you're recording when you first turn on your recorder. For example, I'll usually say something like, AO91 pass on October 4th, 2020 at 1730 Zulu from EN50, my home grid. That way I know the satellite that's involved on the recording, the date and time of the pass, and I'll have great audio documenting that specific satellite pass. That will help me make sure that I enter all of that information in my logbook accurately after the recording is over. Always make sure that you tag your recording at the beginning of a satellite pass with that information. It'll help you out in the long run. There's one more factor we need to consider before a satellite pass, and that's the Doppler effect. We've all heard how a passing car horn's pitch decreases as it passes by. This is because the sound waves from the moving object are compressed as the object moves closer to you, resulting in a higher pitch. As the object moves away from you, the pitch decreases. Satellites experience the same phenomenon. Doppler is much more pronounced on 70 centimeters than it is on 2 meters. For the most part, we don't need to make any corrections in frequency on 2 meters. On 70 centimeters, though, adjusting for Doppler can make the difference between a successful pass or not working anybody. If you're using a satellite with a 70 centimeter uplink, you'll need to adjust your transmit frequency during the pass. For satellites with a 70 centimeter downlink, you'll need to adjust your receive frequency. Adjusting for Doppler on receive is pretty easy. If your reception of the satellite starts sounding a little fuzzy, just adjust your receive frequency down in 5 kHz increments until the audio becomes clear again. You'll need to set your receive frequency about 10 kHz above the actual downlink frequency at the beginning of a pass. By the end of the pass, you'll actually be 10 to 15 kHz below the actual downlink frequency. Adjusting your transmit frequency for Doppler is a little more challenging. 
That involves the exact opposite of receive. You start transmitting about 10 kilohertz below the satellite's uplink frequency, and by the end of the pass, you'll be transmitting 10 to 15 kilohertz above the actual uplink frequency. So how do you know when you've properly adjusted your transmit frequency for Doppler? This is why it's important to have a full duplex satellite station. When you can properly hear yourself off the downlink, you will know you've made the correct adjustments. This process gets easier with practice, so don't worry if it takes a bit to figure out Doppler correction on transmit. If you find this too frustrating at first, just switch to a satellite with a 70 centimeter downlink, like SO50, and practice adjusting your receive frequency until you have that under control. Regardless of whether you're using a full duplex HT or two separate HTs to access FM satellites, you're going to want to make sure that you program a CTCSS tone on your transmit frequency. Almost every satellite requires a CTCSS tone of 67.0 Hz in order to access the satellite. This helps minimize extraneous noise on the VHF UHF bands as the satellite is passing overhead. If you don't have the CTCSS tone programmed, odds are you're not going to make it into the satellite. All right, well, enough of being inside in the shack. Let's go out and do a satellite pass. Uh, we're going to do the AO91 satellite pass on October 16th, 2020 at 1745 Zulu. Uh, this is a pass that's about 70 degrees overhead, practically directly overhead uh, here in central Illinois. And uh, we should be able to work a few stations uh, during that pass. So let's go. WB9, Victor Papa Golf from Kilo X-Ray 9, X-Ray Neil. WB9, Victor Papa Golf from Whiskey 2 Set Fox, Fox Nancy 30. November 9, Kilo Tango from Kilo X Ray 9, X Ray Echo Nancy 50. Uh, hey, John, uh, uh, Echo Mike 69. Nice to hear you. So, Victor. KX9X Alpha Alpha 8 Charlie Hotel, Echo November 63. Alpha Alpha 8 Charlie Hotel, Kilo X-Ray 9 X-Ray. Good morning, uh, Echo Nancy 50, Illinois. Yeah, Kilo. W8 Lima Radio, Kilo X-Ray 9 X-Ray, Echo Nancy 50. Uh, KX9X W8 LRI, Mike 79, good ears. Whiskey 8 CH, Whiskey, Whiskey 8, Whiskey. Echo Nancy 50. WW Alpha Alpha 8 Charlie Hotel, Echo November 63. Bravo 9, Victor Papa Golf, Whiskey 2 Z Fox, Fox Nancy 30. KI 7 UNJ from Kilo X Ray 9, X Ray Echo Nancy 50. Kilo X Ray 9, X Ray KI 7 UNJ, Delta number 03 QSL. QSL. Hello, Whiskey 2 Z Fox, KX 9X, Kilo Bravo 9, Sierra Tango Romeo. Okay, so in a 15 minute satellite pass, we worked about five or six different stations with uh, a Kenwood THD 72. This is a full duplex dual band radio, so you can hear yourself on the downlink in real time as you are transmitting up to the satellite. You can also do this with two separate HTs, one on two meters and another on 70 centimeters for the uplink and downlink. But this HT does the work of two HDs built into one. I hope this video gave you a few tips and tricks on how to succeed on the FM satellites. Feel free to contact me via email or follow me on Twitter and reach out with a question if I can help. In the next video, we'll make the leap to linear satellites and get you started on sideband and CW contacts on the birds. Thanks for watching. 73.